The story of the healing of the blind man Bartimaeus for the gospel for the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time could be read in two ways. First, is one of the great stories in the New Testament of healing. It tells us that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, has the power to restore creation, to heal, and to restore you to your normal self. We also see in this story the power of courageous and persistent faith displayed by the poor man, the blind man, Bartimaeus. Abandoned on the roadsides of life, homeless, poor, without friends, and without family. This man has something going for him. He was a man of strong faith. He was a man of courageous faith. When he heard that Jesus was passing by and he fell deep within his soul that here was the one who alone could restore his humanity, restore his sight, restore his dignity. He began to shout at the top of his voice, son of David, have mercy on me. This was the only man in the whole gospel of Mark who rightly identified Jesus as the son of David. And the people around him, pilgrims who were going to Jerusalem for the Passover, were shouting down on him, keep quiet. It's a solemn procession. Keep quiet. You wonder whether originally this crowd did not see the wretchedness of Bartimaeus' life. But that tells us, brothers and sisters, how many people try to shut you down? How many people try to pull you down? When you perceive in your heart something great is about to happen in your life, when you perceive in your heart that God is on the way, God is passing by, and you want to behold, you want to touch, you want to be healed, you want to be restored, you want to receive divine intervention in your life. And some people will tell you, no, it's not possible. Even sometimes it is that voice, the negative voice in you, saying, keep quiet. But the Bible says, Bartimaeus, the more they tried to shut him down, the more he cried out the louder. Son of David, have pity on me. He identified Jesus as the Messiah. As we heard in the first reading from Jeremiah, that when the Messiah comes, he will heal our sicknesses. He will take upon himself our infirmities. Or as we heard in the second reading, he identifies with our weaknesses. And when Jesus heard the voice of Bartimaeus, the unfailing faith of Bartimaeus met with the unfailing love and compassion of Jesus Christ to restore him, to heal him, and to make him whole. The Bible says that as soon as Jesus called, those people in the crowd who were shutting him down they reversed. They began to say to him, now courage, get up. He's calling you. You realize, and this happens for you, if you hold on to God, that sometimes those ones who are shutting you down, they will become your cheerleaders. Those people who think you're nobody, those people who think that your destiny will be on the roadside of life. And when you are standing up for yourself, when you are trusting God and believing that God will do some great things in your life, they want to pull you down. The promise is that those naysayers will become cheerleaders. There's a courage. He's calling you. And when he came before the Lord, the Lord asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may see. 
And based on his faith, the Bible said, Jesus says to him, go, your faith has saved you. Here we find the inspirational story of a healing miracle that ended up becoming a call to discipleship. Because at the end of the story, Bartimaeus, rather than go to his home, decided to follow the Lord to Jerusalem. There are three points I want to leave for you, brothers and sisters. First is, who was Bartimaeus? He was a nobody. He was marginalized. He was without a voice. But in the eyes of Jesus, you matter, and you matter eternally. Whereas there are many people we find in the gospel, not only in this particular instance, but in Mark chapter 5, verse 25, the woman with the flow of blood, the crowd prevented him from getting to Jesus. Children who came, the disciples were preventing them from coming to Jesus. Jesus says, let the little one, ones come to me. Or the demoniac in Gerasene. Again, Jesus restored him. Or the man who was casting out demons in the name of Jesus. Again, people were trying to prevent him. Lord, we want to stop them. Jesus wants each and every one of us to come. Come as you are. Come with your diseases. Come with your doubts. People might try to prevent you, but God wants all of us to come. And in each case, for instance, in the case of the woman with the flow of blood, again, Jesus says the same thing. Your faith has saved you, woman. Your faith, my dear brother, my dear sister, can save you in any situation you find yourself. Faith is the key. The second point is the contrast between this poor blind man, Bartimaeus, and the rich man. Both came to Jesus. As it were, the rich man, when Jesus told him the cost of discipleship, he could not abandon his possessions. He left the presence of Jesus sad. The poor man, the blind man Bartimaeus, when Jesus called him, the Bible says he left his cloak behind him. He left everything, his past history. He wanted a new life with Jesus and he followed Jesus to Jerusalem. The third point is also the contrast between Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, and the two sons of Zebedee, whose story we heard last week, James and John. Jesus asked exactly the same question of the, to the two sons of Zebedee, the same question he asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? The two sons of Zebedee, James and John, says, we want the kingdom. We want power. We want influence. Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. They were asking something Jesus would never grant them. The poor blind body males, Lord, that I may see. When Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He correctly identified what was truly the desires of his heart and what Jesus could grant. And Jesus restores his sight. Brothers and sisters, the two sons of Zebedee, like the disciples who had been with Jesus for three years, but they were truly blind. They didn't know what they were asking. They didn't know the cost of discipleship. They didn't know what Jesus can do in their lives. The poor man knew he asked the right thing. The disciples were reluctant to follow Jesus to Jerusalem. Even Peter, the head, was saying, no, you cannot go there to die. This poor blind man becomes the ideal disciple who will follow Jesus to Jerusalem. We find here, brothers and sisters, all the conditions that you need for God to work in your life. You need faith. You need to be persistent. You need to block off the naysayers. You need to throw your past behind you. And you need 
to follow Jesus and go with him for he is the way, the truth and the life. So true are the words that the Lord has given to us in the psalmist today. Let us rejoice in the Lord. The Lord has done great things for us. Indeed, we are glad. May the Lord do for you what he did for Bartimaeus. May the Lord grant you the strong faith like Bartimaeus to hold on to Jesus and to follow him all the days of your life. Amen.